Thank you very much. And uh, of course, I would want to, to echo the, the thanks for the hospitality. Uh, the reception uh, last night, uh, all that you have uh, set up for us, uh, I think it, it, it shows the priority of the, of the G7 uh, presidency, and I think it also allows us to connect on a personal basis uh, for all these uh, words that will be set to, to push forward. Um, I want to share a, a particular thanks for Deputy uh, Minister Yonan for having made it here. Uh, it's uh, quite an effort, uh, and it's appreciated. Uh, I hope that maybe later you can also say a bit about how uh, technology enables the Ukrainian state uh, to still have a presence uh, for Ukrainian uh, citizens uh, and to enable the cohesion of the country under this uh, hideous uh, attack uh, that you're in right now, the war that has been imposed on you. I, I find that uh, really impressive, uh, and, and I know uh, since we, we saw each other in Kyiv uh, back in, in February, you've been pressing on uh, also for the global outreach uh, of the, your solutions, and, and I want to thank you for that, because I think that to a very much, very last degree addresses some of the things that has been raised here uh, already today. On, uh, on the topic uh, of our session, um, it's clear that, that all our societies are disrupted uh, by innovation. Uh, and innovation may be a, a fact of life, uh, but the acceleration that we see right now, I think, make it quite unwelcome for at least some citizens. Uh, if they do not see that there is a political leadership uh, to make sure that we make the best use of it, that it's a, a tangible thing that we share the sense of urgency uh, to make sure that we have uh, the necessary guardrails. Uh, I will not add to what has been said uh, about um, technology and, uh, and fighting climate change. I think we are all in that together. But maybe just uh, add uh, that we also need uh, to speed up our efforts on cybersecurity. Um, we have learned uh, the hard ways that our digital economy is there, so interconnected that an attack on, on one part, well, uh, that is also an attack on another part uh, because we see how it spreads, uh, not respecting uh, borders. So uh, we think it is, it is really important uh, that we uh, focus uh, on that, that our telecommunications uh, infrastructure is safe. Uh, and that we make sure that our values when it comes to protecting of the individual, the integrity, the privacy, is also seen when we choose uh, the different uh, vendors uh, in our infrastructure. Uh, we also have an EU-NATO uh, task force uh, working on cybersecurity. They will make the first uh, joint risk assessments uh, in June. Uh, and I think this is, uh, this is absolutely uh, crucial. We are also pushing for um, uh, security in the supply chain and of digital products. As was already mentioned, it is absolutely necessary that we can vouch to citizens that the products, they are uh, safe. Uh, we aim to achieve that within the European Union through the Cyber Resilience, Resilience Act. Uh, but it must rely on international standards so that we can coordinate and, and we can make this a, a thing for, for everyone. Uh, we are also having uh, tabled the EU so Cyber Solidarity Act, uh, so for the first time establishing a standing uh, emergency reserve of trusted private uh, sector providers that can be mobilized immediately uh, if we have serious uh, attack. Uh, we have seen in Ukraine, again, uh, how the private sector have uh, positively uh, engaged uh, I'm sure that the Deputy uh, Minister uh, can testify uh, to this. Uh, we have learned uh, from this experience, um, and we want to make this uh, reserve available to, to close partners uh, as well, uh, because we are indeed uh, in this uh, together. Uh, one quick word on, on semiconductors. Uh, I very much appreciate uh, what was said uh, about the work to, uh, to make sure that the, the chemicals and, and the components that go in are, are safe. Uh, I think PFAS has become the uh, top of mind uh, for everyone, so thank you very much uh, to the Japanese presidency uh, for mentioning this. I think we all uh, engage in uh, making sure that the semiconductor supply chain is safe. 
and uh, we are actively supporting the development of the sector. Uh, we see impressive projects here in uh, Japan. Uh, just uh, this week, uh, a French uh, project is uh, moving forward uh, within the European Union. Uh, very uh, ambitious, um, and I want to congratulate France on, on these results. It is indeed uh, very promising. Uh, so a lot of uh, our public uh, money is going in, which is absolutely uh, well justified. But the thing is that if we do not coordinate, uh, we risk uh, that we are being played off uh, one against uh, each uh, other, uh, by a handful of companies at very high cost for, for taxpayers uh, and with the risk of having overcapacity in some sectors and undercapacity in, in other sectors. Um, I think it's a, it's a real thing to consider that we should not uh, be uh, creating a future dependency on China for the more mature notes. It cannot just be a race for the smallest one, it must be a race for the needed ones for the full suite of semiconductors uh, that are needed. Uh, we have made a lot of progress bilaterally uh, with the number uh, of, uh, of you here uh, present, but maybe we can also think of a more sort of um, pro plurilateral type of, uh, of granular uh, coordination and information sharing. Uh, we have seen how harmful the shortage of semiconductors has been to every part of our society. Uh, including our fight against climate change. And uh, it would be very important uh, if we could prevent that uh, from happening again. Uh, within this group, uh, of course, but we could also invite uh, other partners, such as uh, Korea, Singapore, uh, Taiwan, uh, to make sure that we help each other out uh, on a rainy day and those days that are even worse. Uh, finally, just a word on uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, you've all addressed it uh, already. Um, I, I hope that we share the sense of urgency, because from having been a somewhat technical uh, issue uh, and an issue dealt with in a lot of different bodies, uh, for instance, the European AI Act is building on the OECD uh, principles. Uh, we see the UNESCO uh, working on this. From, from being a, a, an, an issue from a, a technical thing, it is literally something at every citizen's fingertips. So it's so much more political. And, and I can think of no better forum than this um, to, to push for more political guidance uh, as to how to, uh, to use it. Um, I, I hope that we can find uh, a way forward uh, in this uh, format so that we can find common solutions that reflect uh, democratic values uh, because there is a, a need for leadership uh, and there is an urgent uh, need for leadership for people not to scare off uh, the use of, uh, of, for instance, the big uh, language uh, models that we see right now. So looking very much forward to discuss this uh, at a later time because I think a lot of things are coming together right now, starting, of course, with the respect of the integrity of every individual. Thank you.